Hello, welcome to Arts Fest 2020. We create Conway. I'm Miss Mary, Storytime Programmer here at the Faulkner County Library in Conway, Arkansas. And I'm so excited to be a part of this year's Arts Fest. When I heard about this year's theme, We Create Conway, I thought about this book that we have here at the library. Let's read it and I think you'll see why. Maybe something beautiful. How art transformed a neighborhood. We're gonna talk about the authors and illustrators of this book towards the end, so I'm gonna skip that for now. Look at that cityscape. This book is published by Houghton, or Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, Boston, New York. In the heart of a great city, there lived a girl who loved to doodle, draw, color, and paint. Every time she saw a blank piece of paper, Mira thought to herself, hmm, maybe. And because of this, her room was filled with color and her heart was filled with joy. Her room does look very bright compared to the city outside of it. On her way to school one day, Mira gave a round apple to Mr. Henry, the owner of the shop down the street. She gave a flower to Ms. Lopez, the lady with the sparkling eyes. Oh, she's not giving them actual flowers and apples. She's giving them paintings or drawings of them. How generous. She gave a songbird to Mr. Sachs and a red heart to the policeman who walked up and down the streets. On her way home, Mira taped a glowing sun onto the wall hiding in the shadows. Her city was less gray, but not much. The next day, Mira saw a man with a pocket full of paintbrushes. He gazed at the wall. He looked at her son. He held his fingers up in a square and peered through them. Hmm, he said thoughtfully. What do you see? Mira asked. Maybe something beautiful, the man replied. Do you think he's talking about her beautiful son? And then, just like that, he dipped a brush in the paint. Bam, pow, the shadow scurried away. Sky blue cut through the gloom. The man's laughter was like a rainbow spreading across the sky. Who are you? Mira asked. I'm an artist, he said. A muralist. I paint on walls. I'm an artist too, she told him. He handed Mira a brush. Then come on. Mira dipped it in the loudest color she saw. Yeah, we! The wall lit up like sunshine. As the man drew pictures on the bricks, Mira added color, punch, and pizzazz. Soon, Mr. Sachs joined in, then came others. Everyone painted to the rhythm. Salsa, merengue, bebop. Even Mira's mama painted and danced the cha-cha-cha. The whole neighborhood became a giant block party. Until the policeman walked up. Excuse me. He said. The music stopped. Mira put her brush down. They were surely in trouble. The officer cleared his throat, <clears throat> then paused. May I paint with you? He asked. So Mira handed him a paintbrush and the music started again. Teachers and papas jumped in, babies too. Mira and the man handed out brush after brush. Colors spread throughout the streets. So did joy. Wherever Mira and the man went, art followed like the string of a kite. After they colored the walls, they painted utility boxes and benches. They decorated sidewalks with poetry and shine and everyone danced. Together, they created something more beautiful than they had ever imagined. They really have. When their clothes were splattered with a million colors, everyone sat down to rest, except the muralist. His eyes sparkled. You, my friends, are all artists, he told them. The world is your canvas. He smiled wide, then pulled everything together in big, sweeping motions. His paintbrush was like a magic wand. 
When he was finished, Mira added one more bird way up in the sky. Maybe, she thought, just maybe. And that's the end of the story, but it's not the end of the book. There's a note back here from the authors with some photos and illustrations. Maybe Something Beautiful is based on a true story. At one time, the colorful East Village near downtown San Diego, California, did not have murals on the walls, nor quotes from Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Cesar Chavez written on the sidewalk. Benches were not the works of art you can see now, and people living in the area were not part of the vibrant community that they are today. Instead, the streets were gray and drab. But one day, a husband-wife team, he an artist, she a graphic designer and community leader, moved in and transformed their neighborhood into a place of beauty. Rafael and Candace Lopez designed a plan to bring people together to create art so that their neighborhood could become a better place for all to live. They held meetings in their home to share their idea. Everyone was invited. Police officers, graffiti artists, teachers, single parents, children, homeless people, and more. With the help of many, the Urban Art Trail was born and volunteers of all ages, races, and walks of life committed themselves to a common goal, reviving their community through art. First came murals entitled, The Joy of Urban Living and The Strength of the Women. Then the community painted utility boxes and benches bright colors. They crafted mosaics around the trees along the streets. Raphael and Candace had noticed that in their neighborhood, people often looked down at the ground as they walked. So they painted poems and calligraphy on the sidewalks. Little by little, the entire neighborhood became a work of art and an inspiration to those who lived there. The impact of art in the neighborhood grew. Some of the painted benches were auctioned off and the money provided classes and scholarships for at-risk students who had an interest in art. Visitors came to admire. Donations big and small came in and what had once seemed to be an impossible dream became a trademark of San Diego's East Village. The movement prompted by the Urban Art Trail spread far and wide. Communities throughout the United States have commissioned Raphael's murals and neighborhoods as far, as, way, as far away as Canada and Australia have implemented the model of community-based art. Maybe Something Beautiful, illustrated by the muralist who inspired it, was written in honor of Raphael and Candace Lopez and all the quiet leaders in our neighborhoods. It is an invitation to transform not only the walls and streets of our communities, but also the minds and hearts of communities. And every time I read that last paragraph, I get goosebumps. And I love these photos. So here on the back flap, there is some information about our authors. There were two authors and illustrator. So F. Isabel Campoy is an author, anthologist, translator, and bilingual educator who has won many awards for her professional contributions. Teresa Howell is a children's book author and editor with many bilingual books to her credit. Mutually inspired by Rafael Lopez's efforts to transform communities through art, they combined their talents in the lyrical text of Maybe Something Beautiful. F. Isabel Campoy lives in Northern California Teresa Howe lives in Colorado. Rafael Lopez is both the illustrator of this book and the inspiration for the character of the muralist. He was born and raised in Mexico, a place that has always influenced the vivid colors and shapes in his artwork. He now creates community-based mural projects around the world and illustrates award-winning children's books. Rafael Lopez divides his time between Mexico and San Diego, California. And it looks like each one of them has their own personal professional website. Thank you for joining me for Maybe Something Beautiful. What a colorful story. I love that we got to see how Mira was part of her community, how she made it a more colorful place by sharing her artwork with her neighbors. I loved how the muralist came in and brought the entire community together to make it more colorful, more musical, and more unified.
And while Arkansas is known as the natural state for its natural beauty, Arkansas has a surprising number of public art in its communities, especially in the form of murals. Some of these murals tell the stories of the communities that they're located in, like this mural in Benton and this one in Searcy. Some of these murals tell the stories of national figures that have endured struggle and hardship, and these communities don't want those stories lost in the future. You can find some of these in North Little Rock, Fayetteville, and Little Rock, just to name a few. Some murals are specifically commissioned to bring their communities together. You can find examples of these in Fort Smith, Little Rock, Fayetteville, Jonesboro, and many other towns, and of course, our very own city of Conway. Now we know that the process of making or creating art has a lot of benefits. It benefits our mental health, it benefits our physical health, and it benefits our cognitive development. And when we share it with others, it benefits the entire community. And here at the library, we'd like to encourage you to be a part of making Conway colorful. We encourage you to be a little bit more like Mira. So while supplies last, we do have a special Arts Fest supply bag. It's free, just request it, and let me show you what you'll get inside of this cool little bag. You will get a copy of this sweet book, How Do I Love Thee? Um, it's a retelling of Elizabeth Barrett Browning's um, sonnet. You'll get a bookmark and a pencil, but the coolest part is that inside this little Ziploc bag, we have a little four by four canvas, a paintbrush, a little tiny easel, just the right size for that four by four canvas, some crayons, and a little acrylic paint palette so that you can make some special art and share it with your community. What will you paint? I'm thinking about trying to paint a narwhal, and I know somebody in my neighborhood that would really appreciate that. Have a great day. Remember, I help create Conway, you help create Conway, and together we help create Conway. May it be a colorful Conway. Bye.